Niterói, the state of Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll provide this presentation regarding the uh, panorama of the Brazil Brazilian IP market. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, uh, uh, present an introduction about myself and experience. Uh, I am currently a professor in the uh, Department of uh, Entrepreneurship and Management. Uh, I teach courses related to strategy, uh, information technology, and also intellectual property. I also am also a professor of the Master of Science in Business Administration. And uh, uh, I, I also am also consult, an IP consultant, also a founding partner of Vinst IP, is a boutique consultant here in Brazil. Uh, I have uh, experience, industry experience, especially in the IT sector, like I work for UI in the Netherlands. Uh, I worked uh, for an energy trading company uh, in Brazil uh, with projects uh, and all over the world. Uh, so, uh, I joined, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, please, please, please continue. And so uh, I, I also have a work experience. Sorry, I think mm -hmm. I was on mute. I was on mute for, yeah. and uh, an opportunity appeared to uh, join the, the Brazilian Patent Office. And it was very good to combine with my PhD research. So I worked as a patent examiner for six years. Wow. And uh, at INPI in the area of, uh, here in Brazil, we have, uh, 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 it's the 10th largest patent office in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we have a, a kind of, uh, some, nowadays, I believe some think like 250 patent examiners. Mm -hmm. So it's small compared to, to USPTO, EPO, but uh, for a country, it's, a, it's the 10th patent office in the world. So because we don't have that many, you know, that many uh, ex patent examiners, patent examiners they, in Brazil, they have a very broad scope. So I examine patents related to oil and gas, to I to uh, information technology, to information technology software, and also related to security devices and also car accessories. So in terms of IPC, uh, mostly E21B in terms of IPC uh, subclasses, uh, E21B. B60R, E04 something. Uh, and so we, we had a kind of broad uh, scope as compared, for instance, for, to, uh, to EPO, where most patent examiners, they dedicated themselves to, to just one sub IPC subclass. And uh, I moved to academia to a full job time, uh, full time job in academia, but, but also consulting also on, on IP. It was back in 2015, so I've been in academia for six years, where I conduct research. Uh, uh, most of my research relies on IP data, especially patents and trademarks, and but not with totally with a legal vision, a legal perspective, but more. Your hours mode. Mm. Yeah, just muted. Um, yeah, it's mute. I don't know. Uh, but but um, yeah, just I, I have uh, my, my research. I have a view mm -hmm. uh, on uh, on my most of my research products. They examine like uh, technological trends, especially in the Brazilian context. Uh, regarding this session, I, uh, it can be interactive. I, I think we have a Q&A 
uh, session in the end? Yes, we have like, Q&A like, session in the end, oh, okay. the last half an hour. So we, uh, sir, we have mix of people here coming from different backgrounds. We have people from yeah. science, technology, law background. So they have different degrees in uh, LLB, LLM, Masters of Science, Masters of Technology. So we have great mix of crowd around like 60 plus people are joining in us today. And all on right. the behalf of Indian Institute of Patent and Trademark, we welcome you all. And it's a pleasure and it's a great privilege for us and for our audience for our aspiring candidates to have you with us today. Oh, thank you so much, Sasha. I, I don't know if I pronounce your name Chesta, correctly. Chesta, yes, yes. Chesta, Chesta okay, yes. Oh, it was close. But thank you very much. So thank you also everyone for the for the attention. And uh, I prepared some slides to sure. describe uh, the, the main topics around IP here in Brazil. And in the end, uh, we can have a Q&A session session that told us so uh, i'll start uh sharing my screen now so that's uh, here just um, show all windows let's just share so let's uh, start the presentation uh did the presentation uh can you see the presentation it's already yes, loaded yeah, yeah yeah i just loaded yeah okay that's good so good evening everyone uh i prepared i just tried to prepare the presentation that will will uh, inform you about uh the main uh, main topics around ip in brazil uh in terms of uh how how the market is going in terms of uh, demand for patent applications, trademark registrations, and some changes that are occurring in the country right now. So let's move on. Uh, it, uh, just just a question to my students, Edmilson and uh, and Sergio, if you could uh, make a print screen, just uh, to register the moment, and then yes, yes, thank teacher. you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. No so, problem. Uh, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I prepare. I think I was trying to think about a foreigner, an IP expert from another country, uh, asking questions about Brazil. So that's the reason uh, that's the logic behind the slides that, that I prepare. Uh, I'm a professor at UF Universidade Federal Fluminense, just to, to explain here. Uh, also, uh, just uh, uh, I, I teach in the Master of Science course, Jimilson and Sergio De are students of PPGAD. It's a Master of Science, a two-year Master of Science program. And I'm head of a research group, which is called Observatório Digital. This is, here's my email. Here's my, uh, the website of my research group. So if you want to take a look, uh, and also if you want to be in touch, you can also find me in my LinkedIn account. So feel free to contact me via LinkedIn. It will be a pleasure. Uh, well, as I said, I'm also a founding partner of Vince IP. Uh, since uh, like it, it's a company that we, we provide support to larger uh, offices, actually. Normally, when they have uh, questions about preparing uh, responses to any page, to carrying out searches, uh, okay, it's mostly patent searches, we can, we can help them. So uh, it's, a, it's a boutique company. Uh, that's how we, we position Vince. Um, regarding Brazil, just a key figure, just like India, it's a huge country. Uh, it's also a BRIC country, like it's the largest developing countries, as you know, have a group, BRIC, Brazil, Russia, uh, India, China, and South Africa nowadays. Uh, so uh, just a key figures about the country, just to let you know what, what the context we are talking about. So it's the sixth largest population. It's a two, 220 uh, million countries. So in the whole Americas, like it's the largest country in South in, in Latin America, just not only South America, Latin America. In the Americas is just a smaller population than the US. So it's a huge country. Uh, in terms of GDP, it has the 12th largest GDP. Actually, Brazil, was uh, appearing in the top 10 for, for several years, actually for, for at least four decades. But uh, last year, there was a devaluation of our currency, a strong devaluation in the beginning of the pandemic. 
And uh, and by the way, I hope everyone is is, is well by because uh, we we uh, March and April was really tough for us here. We we're also following what's happening in Asia, so in India. So it's a it's a very uh, challenging time. Yeah. But uh, it's. Uh, like last year it had a lot of impact for the economy so there was a devaluation and therefore in terms of uh, gdp in dollar we dropped uh, three positions actually last year uh we are the fifth largest territory brazil is huge as a continental uh, uh, dimensions we are located here like uh, around here like in our position here is a real de janeiro state is more to the south uh very important we are always remembered by for our biodiversity like in the amazon region uh, we have a largest forest rainforest in the world but also the like in this area in the north the whole coast uh, has a forest with the largest biodiversity in the world so uh, the country has a very important natural resources but first biodiversity uh, in terms of fresh water, uh, also it's uh, by far the country with the largest reserves of internal fresh water resources, especially because of the Amazon basin. It's the largest river in the world in terms of uh, amount of data of, uh, of water. Uh, <clears throat> it's the second large iron producer. The mining activities are huge here. We have a uh, this Vale is the most valuable Brazilian company. Actually, nowadays the most valuable uh, listed company in the Latin America. So Vale do Rio Doce. Uh, Brazil, because of the dimensions, also is a is a strong player in the agro agricultural sector, fourth food producer in the world. But uh, it has also diversified the industry. Um, not a lot of people know Brazil is the third uh producer of footwear products it's the largest producer of footwear products shoes and sneakers uh outside asia and not only uh foreign companies but also brazilian companies they they produce a lot there are two clusters that are very strong uh brazil is the first producer of regional jets uh, smaller jets less than 100 passengers uh, especially by the company Embraer, which is has a joint venture with with Boeing recent, a recent joint venture with Boeing, but it's the largest uh, producer. You can see uh, jets, regional jets from Embraer all over the world, so not only in Brazil, and also car manufacturers like the largest brands. They we don't have a Brazilian brand like India has Tata that I know probably there are more. China has several, but Brazil Brazil doesn't have a big it doesn't have uh, a Brazilian car manufacturer, but uh, it has uh, all, all big uh, car companies. They have a factory in Brazil. So think about Volkswagen, Toyota, uh, Nissan, Jack. Uh, even the Chinese companies are arriving here. Tata, I don't know. I don't think they have a, uh, a plant here. Not yet, probably in the, in the future. But um, these this are the country field You're just to, to position yourselves. It's a huge country. And IP reflects, the, the logic about uh, the use of IP reflects this uh, huge internal market. So uh, in terms of GDP, as I said, uh, it's a uh, 12th position. Like, like traditionally, Brazil, it's top 10. But the recent devaluation of real uh, caused this drop. Uh, not only that, but Brazil uh, had a very tough year with the pandemic uh, last year, uh, just like many countries. This year was even worse. The March and April was, were very difficult months for us. But uh, in 2015 and 16 was a, a, <clears throat> a, a very big uh, recession due to some problems uh, of our oil, oil company Petrobras. And it had implications for the whole economy. So it was a kind of uh, it's a company that grew very fast for several years, but uh, the contracts were kind of uh, uh, not transparent. And then the investigations kind of uh, had an impact <clears throat> on the whole economy because Petrobras uh, contracts a lot of companies. Actually, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, companies that provide services to Petrobras, and Petrobras freeze 
a lot of contracts in 2015 and six, 15 and 16. So the economy just kind of uh, dropped, but it, it started to recover, but then the pandemic came. So the, the prospect is that the economy should kind of uh, bounce back after the, probably this year, I think uh, uh, there are evidence that there are, everybody expects the economy to resume to, to kind of uh, come, come back to normal again. Let's hope that, but it's out of control. Uh, in terms of applications, Pat, <clears throat> in IP applications, just contextualizing the, the world, I just grabbed this uh, data from WIPO. Seems like the whole in the whole world, the PCT applications, the patent uh, went up, like especially China, but also in the US, most countries. There were there was a trend to use uh, PCT away uh, uh, more, more intensively. So the, 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 there was also a, last year a huge boost in technological development, both uh, pharmaceutical, but also digital. Digital was, was booming uh, since last year and it, this had an impact. So the overall figure is that there, there was uh, more, there, there were more applications and uh, in several areas as I, as I told you like especially software, like uh, pharmaceutical, computer technology. So it's a general trend in the world. Like, but you, you're here to talk about Brazil. So uh, uh, I'll comment about what's happening here. Actually, the number of patent applications, uh, uh, if we take this uh, data from uh, INPI, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, was dropping, actually. It reached the peak like in 2014, the, the, just to, to contextualize, uh, the Brazilian economy was booming actually from 2008 until 2012. So the, the, as we, we think about the growth of the GDP was very strong, but uh, 2015 Brazil started to, uh, a recession started here. So uh, this had an impact on the, on the patent applications. And in Brazil, we have uh, uh, two types of patents. We have patents with a duration of uh, a term of 20 years, and we have utility models. Not all the countries, I don't know, Finja has also utility models, but uh, here we have both. Here, this figure is just uh, related to, uh, this related to patents, uh, patents with a 20 year term. Here, it's important to mention that about this figure, if you see here, the top, the, 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 like in 2015, we have around 30,000 uh, uh, applications per year. And nowadays we are around 25,000. So they get stable. So the pandemic just had a uh, small effect here, dropped a little bit, like here. So we see especially uh, from here, just like March 2020, we see uh, a trend, uh, a small trend of, of dropping, of reducing the number of applications. But one thing, one pattern that I believe that we have in Brazil that's also likely to be the same in, in India, for instance, is that from this total uh, 25,000 patent applications, we have uh, uh, like almost 80%, like 79% from uh, non-residents and 21%. Not, normally the, the, the average we have uh, is between 20 to uh, 15 to 20% of patent applications by residents. So why is that? Simply because uh, we have a huge market as I, I, as I told you. It's a very important market. And Brazil has a diversified industry that's capable of copying. Therefore, foreign companies, like I, I, I work in the, as I said, the, well, most of the patent applications that I examined were in the oil industry. And, uh, and by far, more than 90% of the patent, ex, uh, the, the patent applications that I examined while I was a patent examiner, they were from non-residents, from companies like, although we have Petrobras is a huge company, is a, it's an oil company with international operations as well. But uh, most of the patent applications came from uh, Halliburton, from the US, from Baker Hughes, from the US, from 
uh, Julien Berger from from France, like uh, from from companies from all other other from foreign companies. So it's a really a, a strong pattern we have in Brazil. Uh, moving on, if we talk about utility models, we have more kind of a, a variation here. Uh, utility models, we have a more balanced, uh, like I, I didn't put the figure here, but we have more than 50% of utility models uh, filled by residents. And here we have a, a strong variation in terms of uh, the number. But as you can see, comparing the, the number total number of applications, we see that uh, there, there are many more, <clears throat> there, there, the number is, uh, of patents is larger, is much larger as compared to utility models. Probably, uh, yeah, if you take uh, something like 10 to one, the proportions like uh, 50,000, uh, 25,000 to 200, uh, to uh, 2,500. So it's the proportion of one to 10. And also interesting to mention in Brazil, patent examiners, it's normal uh, for them to examine both. Uh, like, like, actually, uh, I examined for some time both patents and utility models. But uh, in 2014, while uh, I was still a patent examiner, the NPI created a division to examine just utility models. So uh, from 2014, Onwards, I stopped it. I didn't uh, examine any any other utility models because I was not uh, working for the utility model division. So uh, just uh, uh, contact uh, information about how the the Brazilian NPI, the Brazilian Patent Trademark Office, is organized. Uh, in terms of uh, the characteristics of the the applicants, like as I said, the non-residents, they are multinationals. And in terms of, for instance, pharmaceutical, uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, technologies, like I had some colleagues, uh, we had contact, we had contact, uh, constant contact, so we were talking all the time. And the, the examiners uh, working with pharmaceutical products at INPI, uh, most of the the, of the the patent applications that they examine they are PCT, and PCT that are filled from that are filled by foreign companies, by pharmaceutical like Pfizer, like uh, uh, Moderna, like uh, uh, Glaxo, uh, Welcome, like, like uh, all the, the famous pharmaceuticals, Johnson Johnson, and and so on, and. This, this is a pattern of a developing country. Like in Brazil, we have uh, the uh, generic industry, but we don't have uh, 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 very um, popular pharmaceutical products developed in Brazil. So if we go to a Brazilian drugstore uh, or pharmacy, like if you, you, you can reach, you can have access to all the medicines the most advanced medicines that exist in the world. However, none of them were developed by a Brazilian company or Brazilian in the Brazilian territory. Maybe they could also have been developed by a Brazilian uh, uh, scientist working in the US, working in the Switzerland, working uh, in the Netherlands. But uh, what we have here is that uh, we don't have a, a pharmaceutical product, a pharmaceutical uh, company that succeeds in uh, putting popular medicines in the in the market you probably know that and uh, if you look at the residents uh, that are filling patents uh, we have a very particular pattern probably you don't have this pattern in, in in india because it results from regulations here in brazil and if we see the top 10 applicants like for the la at least at the, uh, for the last 10 years, uh, we, we see that the universities are the most uh, active patent applicants in the country. Like if we look at 2019, eight out of 10 uh, applicant, uh, top 10 applicants were universities. So the companies are Petrobras, Petrobras is a total 
is always appear in the top 10. Uh, in the past, sometimes like 10 years ago, sometimes Petrobras appeared as the first patent applicants, as a resident patent applicants. And we have here CNH, the Industrial Brazil. So it's a foreign company. I'm not sure where CNH is from. I, I believe they are from Ireland, but they are from, not from a foreign country, but they research, they, they have a R&D center in Brazil. So it's uh, several uh, uh, multinational companies. They have a research center in Brazil and therefore they file patents as residents. Some of them, they, they have research centers in Brazil, but they end up filling the patent ap applications from their uh, uh, headquarters. So that's the case, for instance, uh, in the oil industry. They have uh, uh, research centers in Brazil, but they, they decide, I don't know why, that they decide just to, to file the patents from uh, the US, from Houston, from, uh, from the Netherlands, from the UK. That's a strategic, it's an internal strategic decision that it's, in, it's a, actually an interesting area for, for research. Uh, not always we can have the, actually the access, uh, access the, the, the data of the company, maybe it can be classified, confidential, but it's certainly an interesting area to, to investigate. So it, I think it's really nice to mention. I think I can learn also from you in the, the Q&A session because uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, I don't expect India to have the same pattern as we have here in Brazil, because no, we, we have, uh, that, go, go ahead. No, we, yeah, we, some... no we, we don't have a similar pattern. We have some like different patterns, especially India uh, doesn't have the uh, last you were talking about utility uh, models. So India yeah. doesn't have utility models yet approved. Oh, okay. Well, that's mm. interesting. Yeah. I, I saw in a WIPO list and I think uh, around 20 countries, they have uh, utility models. And uh, yeah, a lot of people in Brazil question that. Why not just simplify, just have patents, you know, but that, that there is uh, uh, an argument that the, the utility models are more convenient to a small business and uh, frugal uh, innovations and therefore Absolutely. it was uh, yeah, it was introduced in the law of the patent law of 1996 and still there i think uh, that there's no actually people ask uh, uh, people uh, normally they uh, talk about the why the, there's this difference I, actually it's not very clear even for a NPE uh, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, a pat, an application can be both a patent or an industrial or, or a utility model. And sometimes you see utility models granted that you think, oh, I, sh I think they should, uh, the nature actually is it, it's much more patent than a utility model. However, uh, it's not very clear this distinction and it works in this way. Some, some companies, they prefer, they prefer to file utility models, other companies, they have similar products, they, they prefer patents. So although we have this provision, uh, the border between a utility model and a, and a patent, it's not, there's not a total consensus actually, just to be frank. And also with just uh, before we move on, for instance, uh, in terms of industry, like uh, if we talk about B60R, like the IPC related to car parts, car accessories. Sometimes you have utility models, sometimes patents. Uh, but in the oil industry, just patents. Like I've never seen, uh, I never examined an utility model from uh, uh, in the oil industry. It's kind of a consensus. Although it could be uh, in terms of the what's established by Brazilian law, it could be, but uh, in some industries they opt they, they tend to opt more for patents and other industries more for utility models. So it's a, I, I don't think it has a lot of commercial implications in terms of uh, actually the, the commercial result, but uh, it's just the characteristics. And also if the, the audience is also studying to become, uh, as I understood, to, to prepare to work uh, as uh, attorneys. And so if they, have a client uh, that requests uh, uh, an application of, to file 
uh, an application in Brazil. So there, there's these two options, uh, like these two options like this. In terms of trademark, we have a different pattern. The trademarks uh, are growing. Mm -hmm. I believe that, uh, and, and also it's what I just put that note here, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to patents, most of the applicants, they are Brazilians, they are residents, 95% are residents. And what we have here is that, for instance, if we think about digital companies, startups, uh, in the, if we, if, if, even if we think about the very uh, successful uh, startup that there's this term unicorn, the mm -hmm. startup that reach a valuation of uh, $1 billion, we have uh, in Brazil uh, 16 right now. None of the, the, the unicorns, they file patents in Brazil. The software companies, normally they don't file patents here as well. Even if they innovate, they uh, kind of, uh, uh, the software patent remains a uh, very, uh, I would say not, not very clear area, not well defined. So, so there's not so a culture so they are protected right. under copyrights or something if they are not patented yeah they they use um, primarily trademarks and uh, there is uh, copyright but it's not very common i think uh, maybe the market's very new like we don't have many cases of uh, legal battles involving software in brazil not not like in the us maybe it will come i, I don't know maybe uh, if the, we, do, we, don't, we don't have cases right now with a, a lot of materiality in terms of impact, uh, values of the fines and uh, lawsuits that are very uh, big. So therefore, uh, the culture of patenting software is not very well, well established. However, if we look at uh, INPI data, we see that Microsoft patents a lot in Brazil. They have a lot of patent applications and granted patent applications also here, but they are also not in the Brazilian market. They are kind of, uh, they're not very aggressive with, with their portfolio. That could be some, maybe one day they will become, but uh, they, are, they are patenting anyway. Uh, so that we have this uh, distinction. One important remark about the trademark registration is that we, uh, we, adopted the Madrid protocol last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, now uh, it's become, it became easier to, for foreigners to pat to rights to trademarks in Brazil. Maybe with the Madrid adoption uh, in Brazil, uh, this proportion maybe tends to, to, to uh, vary. I think the re non-residents tend to register more frequently in Brazil as uh, as compared to what they have been doing in, in recent years. However, if we talk about trademarks, as we see, there is a, a, a trend of growth. We don't see like a company here in Brazil, a big company uh, without trademark registrations. Actually, if they don't have a trademark here, they are very uh, uh, target for, for lawsuits. And uh, therefore, that there is this culture, especially with trademarks, uh, uh, big, big companies, they, especially if it, regards B2C, the services, uh, products and the, the shelves of, of the supermarket, they have a trademark registration. It's, uh, there, there is a, a consensus here. And there are lawsuits as well. So uh, a company, a big company offering a product here without a trademark registration is likely to be sued. It's likely to be get notified. That happens very frequently. Actually, that's a uh, I would say the biggest uh, IP market, uh, the biggest uh, demand for services uh, here in Brazil. Uh, moving on to the industrial design, industrial design are kind of stable, uh, around 6,000 per year. And industrial design, we have, as I said, we have a very strong uh, uh, footwear industry. We have some, uh, uh, textile industry also some uh, clothes uh, that uses uh, industrial designs a lot but uh, it's kind of stable it's it's a type of uh, IP in Brazil that you don't see or you also don't see a lot of uh, lawsuits regarding industrial designs 
It's more like uh, protection, it's more like building a fence and reducing the risk of the operation of uh, commercializing a certain product. But uh, we have this, uh, uh, this provision, the industrial design. And we have 68% of residents, as I said, as I told, uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, Brazilian companies producing this Brazilian designs, especially uh, footwear, clothes, and, uh, and therefore they are protecting the, the visual aspects of this uh, inventions. So, uh, regarding research, like I'll talk about other for moving to our Q and A session. Uh, as I said, I use a lot of patent and uh, trademark uh, data to carry out my research. Uh, one, I, I selected two papers here just to present them very, very briefly. This one I published in 2014, and it addresses the impact of the oil discovery of Petrobras on patent applications. So Brazil has been a producer of oil since the, 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 the 70s, actually the 60s, there was a, a small production, but Brazil was an importer of oil for, for, for decades. But in 2007, Petrobras, the national oil company, uh, discovered the huge oil reserves in the coast, actually very close to where we are here in Brazil, in the coast of Rio de Janeiro, and was the biggest oil discovery uh, in several years in the whole world. Uh, but it's a challenge also, uh, conditions to explore. It's 150 kilometers from the, from the shore, 7,000 meters below the, the sea level. Uh, it's very expensive to explore, but it created the potential for Brazil to become an exporter of oil. And what, if we take a look at the, uh, at the applications here, they, they respond very quickly to this discovery. So there was around 200 patent applications, each 21 beep every year, and it kind of skyrocketed. So it, uh, we have uh, this graph just in 2000. 10, but uh, the number was multiplied by four, the number. However, if you we'll take a look at the patent applicants, we see that most of them, they are US companies uh, who really uh, decided to add Brazil, a BR application in the family. So uh, most of the technology that were developed, uh, like in the, especially in the US and Europe, like in Norway or in the Netherlands, UK, US and the companies, they started to add in Brazil in the family, like, a, like including Brazil. Uh, most of these uh, applications, there are also uh, applications uh, with uh, the, in different countries, they have a family and uh, they were, <coughs> uh, if, we, if we take a look at Petrobras, as you remember, Petrobras is the, normally appears in the top 10 Brazilian uh, patent applicants, but here in the, the domestic market of Petrobras, they're only the fifth largest patent uh, applicant here. The, so the, uh, it, it has some less uh, patent ap applications as compared to Baker Hughes, and American uh, uh, Halliburton, uh, Prado Research and Development, which is actually Chalum uh, Cameron Cooper, Vetsco Gray, so the American oil companies, they were much more aggressive as compared to the Brazilian. And there was actually a, a, a huge government program to uh, promote uh, the development of technologies here in Brazil, but they didn't actually deliver uh, uh, results, actually. We don't see the, um, a lot of Brazilian companies selling actually licensing technologies in the oil industry. However, the, the, the oil industry is kind of uh, booming again. The investment is growing again and Petrobras is, is increasing production a lot, especially in the last three years. Uh, the footwear industry, we conducted a study. Uh, we have two clusters, one in the south, uh, one close to the Argentina, Uruguay, the other one in Sao Paulo, and they produce like they concentrate most of the Brazilian footwear industry. One is in Novo Hamburgo, the other is in, in Franca. And uh, it's an example of uh, products that are produced by Brazilians. Actually, they're uh, 
not only produced, but developed by Brazilians, produced by Brazilians, and used by Brazilians. And there is a lot of export as well. So it's a particular characteristic of the country. You don't find this characteristic in Argentina, in the neighbor countries, in Mexico. Like Brazil establishes a strong uh, footwear industry that is resisting the competition from China, like with differentiation, they're kind of uh, creating also exploring a lot of brands, high-end brands they're trying to. And if we see the stock prices of this comp some, some uh, footwear companies, they are also doing quite well. It was a good investment in recent years. And they use up IP kind of in a, in a regular basis, but they use mostly industrial design. This is just a, a, an interval until 2013, but uh, we see that, uh, that they have a, a kind of a huge variation, but they, they use it uh, quite frequently. So this is an interesting way of uh, understanding the industry to take a look at the, uh, the IP data. It's a kind of a strategic footprint that's left by the companies. All right, let's talk, uh, moving on to the, to the end of the, the session. Well, one, one thing we have in Brazil, a problem is uh, the backlog, the pending patent backlog. So it's, uh, we have, don't have enough examiners. It actually dropped in the last years, but uh, in some areas we have more than 10 years uh, for the applications to be examined. Now, if you take, uh, if you think about, uh, especially telecommunication, uh, uh, devices, if you think about pharmaceutical, they take a lot of time. Uh, oil uh, was about around 10 years, so we have a huge backlog, one of the largest in the world. It's dropping, but uh, it's still a, a concern here. And it's an easy thing to, to solve, actually. It's just a kind of hiring more patent examiners, but it's an industry of uh, hidden agendas. So there, are, as I worked for NPI, I could really notice that there is a kind of, uh, there are a lot of players in Brazil interested in having a lot of backlog. You no, know? so uh, it's not a question of efficiency. It's a lot of interest is in, uh, commercial interest involved. Uh, what we have now, the very important decision that's appearing every Brazilian uh, uh, news, actually every newspaper, it's really headlines in this week, in the past few weeks, uh, regarding the a provision that we have. I think very few countries in the world have it, but in Brazil, it's possible to have a, a patent term longer than 20 years. Like it's closely associated with backlog. Like if the patent takes more than 10 years to be approved, uh, every day, more than uh, 10 years, uh, after after filling can be uh, uh, used to extend the term. So if the patent was approved after 15 years, the patent term becomes 25 rather than 20. If the if takes the 18 years, the patent term becomes uh, 28 years. So you can imagine uh, the pharmaceutical industry like uh, likes that a lot. Yeah, especially if we talk about very popular medicines. The largest IP, uh, uh, the largest attorneys in Brazil, they like this provision a lot. Actually, they like it in the past. Uh, they like it a lot. Like what we do as consultant, I, I think it's not very valuable to me. But uh, there are some interests, especially the, the multinational pharmaceuticals and the largest IP attorneys in Brazil, they, they enjoy that a lot. But it's over. Like the Supreme Court actually decided uh, this week that this uh, this provision uh, comes from Article 40 of the Brazilian IP law of 1996, 9279, uh, issued in, in 1996, and uh, it was very uh, uh, con uh, controversial but they generate a lot of revenue for the largest IP offices representing the, the big pharmaceutical companies for very popular products. And what we have nowadays, it's uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, uh, actually this article was revoked yesterday, article 40, where the Supreme Court revoked almost a consensus because of the pandemic. 
And what the impact of this is that more than 15,000 uh, patent applications were having their term extended. And initially the idea was just uh, removing them for, the, for pharmaceuticals, but now they revoke the Article 40 for all health products, uh, for both uh, for, uh, pharmaceuticals, but also health equipment and things like that. And it caused a lot of uh, resistance from the largest IP attorneys in the country because they will lose revenue. That's uh, the, some, some of them, they, they were very concentrated. It's a type of, uh, of service that very few uh, of, uh, attorneys uh, got this type of, uh, of job, of, of, of contract. But, but this was interesting because uh, it's a patent. Patent is normally not very popular in Brazil. Most of the, as I see in the university, a lot of people don't know anything about patents, but this was a national news. Uh, it kind of, uh, uh, it's a very important change in the country. It's a lot, and actually an alignment with the most countries. It's just a provision that existed here. Uh, and uh, just as a final point, uh, there is also a kind of political discussion, uh, as you know, Biden uh, opted to kind of uh, break the patents uh, uh, of pharmaceutical patents re regarding the vac vaccines. And Brazil is not uh, supporting Biden in, in this decision. Uh, however, it's questioning here, people are questioning why Brazil is not, uh, is not supporting Biden, what are the actual interests involved? Uh, well, it's the kind of black box, you know, in our politics. We don't know what's involved. Here in Brazil, the, our president was a very close ally of uh, Donald Trump. And maybe it's a kind of uh, some opportunity he found to oppose uh, Biden anyway. Maybe there is a pharmaceutical interest involved. Uh, so we, we don't have a, for, for the population, it's not very clear why Brazil is not really uh, uh, like supporting this initiative, but uh, but anyway, it's something that if we watch the Brazilian TV, it's uh, it's kind of uh, everywhere. Every channel, every newspaper is talking about that. Uh, this week, actually, uh, just brought this true, fresh uh, news about IP in Brazil. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, I try to give this uh, general panorama of Brazil and finishing with the current topics we have here. And uh, I'm really happy uh, to uh, answer questions and hear from you or comments, not only questions, comments, suggestions, everything. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. It was a really uh, nice session and it was like very informative telling about uh, all the uh, things which are happening uh, in Brazil. And now floor is open for discussion. So I request uh, all the audience, if they have like questions to ask, they can direct it to Dr. Gabriel. So first question I, I want to ask that uh, yeah. talking about the utility model. So as it is yeah. not an IP instrument in India. So you have examined some of the utility models as exam. Yeah. So what are the, the, how you draw a line or what are the challenges which are faced when you examine or when you pass such applications? Yeah, actually, as I said, the, the Brazilian law uh, defined the de definition of the patent requirements for a patent and for utility model, they are very similar. Just a question of, just actually one word. In Portuguese, it's uh, obvious, what is uh, obvious uh, from, the, from, the, from, from the existing prior art and, and patents can, can be uh, that you have a flash of a genius and so it, the definition is not clear, it doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. What we have, it's a kind of, uh, just like in the, in the legal sector, in the, the legal uh, arena, the, a kind of jurisprudence in the administrative level. Like we used to consider uh, utility model, a more simple invention, like uh, an umbrella, like uh, some improvements in a, in a, in a sneaker and in, in a shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, some part of a table, a yeah. chair, 
Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, if you have something very uh, complex with a lot of parts, like uh, a machine uh, to produce, uh, to, uh, to clean uh, rice, or a machine for packaging products with a lot of parts, uh, with a mechanic and electrical motors inside, then if they if a napkin tries to to uh, protect uh, this complex machine as a utility model we requested the this applicant actually to uh, that that wasn't the wrong nature of protection and that should be uh, should cancel this uh, this application should, should abandon this application and request as a uh, as a as a patent so uh, and 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 the contribution actually it's very uh, very similar actually if you take you do the search the same way mm -hmm. and uh, the only recommendation actually that didn't exist when i joined the ENPI in 2009 mm -hmm. like when i joined and start doing exam we could we, we could use uh, a combination of documents uh, to uh, uh, a, a combination uh, uh, of documents in our report for a utility model. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was an internal uh, document, internal uh, document that uh, just introduced the requirement that for a patent application, mm -hmm. we could combine documents. Mm -hmm. For utility models, we could use only one document. Mm -hmm. So we, like, uh, we, it should be more uh, uh, the the, step, the inventive step of utility model should be more modest. We could allow something more modest. While in the patent applications, like you could combine documents in terms of, uh, like, one you are talking about uh, uh, two pieces together, like one one is the the base. Of uh, of certain machine, like the how, how it's fixed on the floor, and the other part is how the machine works on, on the second part. And then you could use two documents uh, uh, as uh, as an impeditive uh, argument for for this patent application. For utility models, you could not. You would have to find uh, a, a document that combines the two features. You know, just uh, I, I I think. In terms of concrete uh, recommendations, this, this was the only uh, concrete uh, re recommendation to the concrete difference that existed. The other one was more like, uh, like I said, just you, uh, like, as an examiner, when you get uh, utility model, expect a more simple invention. Mm -hmm. Invention when you get a patent, you expect something more intricate, more complex, sophisticated. So this, that's why. There, there's a lot of questioning regarding, oh, but why both of them exist? What's actually the value? But since it's uh, it was it, it's defined in the in the IP law, changing that it's not an administrative uh, task. It's a legal mm -hmm. that involves uh, approval of the parliament and also yeah. uh, could generate a lot of uh, lawsuits uh, and could end up just like Article 40 that I mentioned mm -hmm. could end up in the Supreme Court. But in the interests are not very, uh, I think nobody feels uh, very uh, uh, impacted by the existence of both. It's not clear, actually, this is a consensus. It's not very clear, the, the boundary, mm -hmm. but uh, nobody, uh, you don't have a lawsuit because this boundary is not clear. Okay, great, great, that's great. Uh, uh, audience, uh, anybody wants to uh, ask any questions or want to share their feedback or comments on this lecture? Mamita, what have you learned today? How was your experience? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's a, such a very good experience because I don't have any idea about the Brazilian law as well as their trademark or patent application procedure. So this is the basic concept which I have learned. So thank you so much, sir. It's a very pleasure to hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Manta. We appreciate it. It's a different uh, setting. It's very interesting. Like very, 
uh, very nice that digital technologies uh, enabling us to kind of stay together here in the, yes, in the same yes, session. Yeah. Geographically so distant, but uh, it's uh, interesting. Yes, uh, Prakar, you want to ask uh, ask some question? You have your uh, you have raised your hand. Um, um, yes, ma'am. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much uh, for the lecture, sir. Sir, I had a question with respect to computer-related inventions. Uh, okay. So speaking of the Indian scenario, it uh, the Indian law has basically made it very difficult for CRI, that is, computer-related inventions, to get it patented under the Indian law because of. I mean, it's like if if that is solely based on a business model, then you can't get it patented and there's a very tough uh, scrutiny to it. So I just wanted to know how Brazilian law looks towards this computer related invention. That's a great question. Thank you, Prakha. Yeah, it's very interesting regarding computer uh, implemented inventions. Uh, here in Brazil, I didn't comment that uh, in, the, in the presentation, maybe just to uh, no, not uh, to avoid confusion, but here in Brazil we have I don't know if you have in India, but we have uh, a possibility of registering computer uh, software, just like a copyright. That's called the uh, uh, programa registro de programa de computador in Portuguese. However, uh, I, I consider this uh, registration very weak because. It's just a formal uh, registration. It's not examined and it's registered just like a book. Uh, you get the code, uh, like it doesn't matter if uh, it's written, uh, the code is uh, PHP or Java, Python, doesn't matter. It even doesn't matter if the code actually runs, if it makes sense, if it solves anything. It's just a question of protecting copyright, but it's called Programa de Computador, uh, just like a book. and this, this uh, uh, type of registration was, was introduced and it's not used very heavily. You don't see a lot of uh, agreement, a, a lot of uh, legal procedures regarding registro de programa de computador because it's not a patent. And then uh, some universities, they, they register just because it counts as a production thing. Some Public companies, they, they demand uh, for procurement when they, they contract a service. That, but uh, if you change just one word, uh, you change the, the software, it's another thing, so no problem. However, regarding computer implemented invention, uh, in, in Brazil, it's very uh, not well defined. And I think it's by purpose. It, it's by, uh, because I think we are, uh, I think the Brazil, just like India, no, not just like India, Brazil has uh, a software industry very strong, not as strong as India, but uh, also is a, is a, there are a lot of clusters of software development, not only foreign companies like Microsoft, Google, uh, SAP, but we have strong Brazilian uh, consultants, uh, strong Brazilian products in the software industry. And the industry, the Brazilian industry is kind of articulated and they somehow they lobby uh, the, the definition of the Brazilian law in order to, to keep it kind of confusing in terms of uh, like, and, and what makes it even more confusing in Brazil is that if we take a look at the, the Brazilian law, article 10, uh, regards what what is a what can be patented the, the subject matter that can be patented in Brazil, and one of the provisions is uh, that uh, programa de computador is not cannot be patented, which means that software could not be patented. However, as I said, if you take a look at the the registrations here in Brazil, the the, the, the IP data in Brazil. You see Microsoft with a lot of patents here in Brazil, a lot of patents actually granted. But if they include the name software in the patent application, it will be uh, the examiner will use. And actually, I, I could use that because in the oil industry, sometimes we had uh, an embedded software. But if it was the name software in the title, we could use Article 10 to refuse the application, to refuse the patent application. 
and so what we have it's just like the brazilian industry kind of uh, is very uh, afraid about the like if the there is a very clear procedure for computer implemented invention uh, we fear that the, the brazilian industry fears that uh, the us industry will patent here a lot that, that maybe they would even try to introduce we don't have patent trolls here we don't have a, a case of patent trolls i don't know if in india there are patent trolls like in the us but we, we don't have here we, we never had it here but maybe if uh, pat computer implemented inventions become very clear very detailed uh maybe some opportunistic uh behaviors like it should occur here and that, therefore yeah, the NPI, it's a, in, a, in a developing country, is an institution that uh, sometimes looks like they are not efficient, but the, uh, the not being efficient actually is the objective in some areas because there are so many interests, so uh, powerful in commercial interests involved. And here in Brazil, uh, uh, computer implemented inventions, so you can get a patent actually uh it's a good source of, I, I can say that's a good source of consultancy that that i do because you can do a lot of people think that oh no because it's there in the law you can't register a computer uh, so you can't register software in brazil anything you write in the code any software is not patentable but in, the, in fact it, it it's not you have to patent actually as a, as a method you don't have to put in the patent application the the code that you it doesn't matter if you write in Java or PHP, but actually you define the, the method, the method that you want to protect. What's, in, in, what's the innovation and in the method in relation to the prior art? And so uh, it's, it's a very kind of uh, first logic. And just uh, as, I, as I mentioned, if we take a look at the most important Brazilian startups, like the unicorns, the, the companies that have a value uh, above one billion dollars they have uh, very strong uh, development capabilities they they are developing software a lot they, they have uh, hundreds of uh, developers working for them however they don't file a single patent it's still like uh, they, they don't they don't have the, the business case uh, in the country that forces them to patent and they feel like, okay, it's, I can go on without patents. I can, I move on, no problem. Yeah. But may, it might change. I think it, it, every time it depends on the case. Mm -hmm. And just, just to kind of uh, illustrate the, the case, like in Braer, the example that I mentioned, is the largest uh, manufacturer of uh, regional jets in the world. Uh, there are, in Ninja, there are several uh, companies that use in Braer, China. Uh, in, everywhere the, the Embraer uh, airplanes. And uh, by, by following the history of Embraer, uh, in the 80s, they, they, they kind of uh, increased the production in the 90s. And until the 80s, they produced the very small, uh, low technology airplanes. And these airplanes, uh, as mentioned by the, like, by the IP head of Embraer, in the 80s, they could sell this uh, low low technology airplanes, propel airplanes, without any patents because they use they just used existing technology. The the plane worked was was cheap was reliable. Okay, they, they sell it. But once they started producing jets, uh, using uh, like GE technology, like using technologies with, uh, like in the frontier of technology, buying specifying technologies for other companies then they they got sued and then they started building a kind of defensive portfolio and nowadays Embraer they they do have a, a portfolio of patents so in the software industry i believe it will be like that once uh, they got we have a, uh, a very visible lawsuits here in brazil a lot of uh, materiality involved uh I think there will be a rush to build portfolios, as we see in the US with Google, all, all these tech giants, they have huge portfolios. And, uh, and here in Brazil, actually, things start to uh, happen first in, in the technology area. They tend to help happen first in the US, and then they uh, start happening in Brazil. 
so we will see we don't don't know actually not now but uh, but you can you you, you can patent a, a software in brazil uh if you're in trouble call me I'll help you. <laughs> sure, sure, definitely. That was a great insight uh, on software patents. Uh, Mr. Abhishek Jain, do you have a question? You have raised your hand. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening, ma'am. And good evening, sir. Thanks for the wonderful session you gave to us. Uh, can you please uh, switch have... on your camera as well? We want to see you. It will be more easy to answer in person. Uh, ma'am, uh, due to some reasons, sir, the camera. All right, all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, definitely. So I have two questions from sir. So the first question is that can uh, does Brazil allow patent agents from different countries to practice over there in Brazil? Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, patent agents from different countries, and no, actually, uh, in Brazil, uh, you need to be represented by uh, somebody. You doesn't you you can be a foreigner. But you need to have a uh, uh, to be registered as a resident in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to be to work, actually to represent somebody, you can be don't, don't need to be Brazilian. But as uh, in terms of uh, registration, the website of NP is registration as a tor an attorney. Or, uh, you need to uh, have a CPF, uh, which is a kind of social security number in the U.S. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, you can. Just, uh, but there are people who, like I know a uh, Dutch guy. I know uh, here close to my my place there is a uh, an English uh, uh, an, an an English uh, attorney that lives in Brazil and has uh, this. I think I don't know if it has nationality, but he has uh, this social security number and he represents companies uh, that I think most countries are. Uh, uh, same. Yeah, most countries are same. You yeah, need to be yeah. a citizen of that country. In India, it yeah, is all exactly. the same. Yeah. 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 What we don't have uh, in, in ICU, the audience is preparing for. I, I understood that you're preparing for the national examination. Uh, here in Brazil, we used to have uh, this uh, kind of uh, license to, to be an attorney. Here in Brazil, we don't have. There is a discussion regarding how, what's the best uh, uh, format. But uh, actually, anyone can represent here in Brazil. Uh, any anyone with a Brazilian uh, uh, social security number. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, uh, uh, Minakshi Lal. Do you have a question? You have put out in a chat, and Minakshi, you want to ask some question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you yeah. for coming. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Gabriel, for, for your time and share the name. Uh, I would like to know, uh, I have done like a, a research in embryonic stem cells. So what is the patentability for embryonic stem cells in uh, Brazil? Okay. So the, the, the sound was uh, cutting, okay. actually, it was not very... So Dr. Gabriel, she is asking, she is working in a stem cell technology in India. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. she is asking about what is the patenting guidelines, anything related to stem cell technology in Brazil? Yeah, well, actually, uh, it's not uh, really my area, but uh, uh, it's uh, in terms of uh, patenting, there are a lot of the Brazilian Law is very restrictive. This is one of the most restrictive in the world. So uh, it's uh, probably you have uh, difficulties in uh, you in uh, for, for stem cell, for instance, for adding a Brazilian uh, family actually to your patent uh, originally with a uh, U.S. priority or even with uh, I don't know if the uh, legislation in, uh, in in India is also restrictive as Brazil, but Brazil tries to restrict uh, more as compared to developed countries, for instance. And even, uh, for instance, uh, not stem cell, but uh, for biodiversity, actually, there is a, uh, there's the, the, a bottleneck in relation to the, the patent applications because it needs to get approval from a, from a uh, from uh, other institutions, from from uh, uh, from 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 other institutions, in order to prevent biopiracy, and uh, 
the government's actually finding some researchers without uh, that filed patents without uh, uh, the government's uh, 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 approval. So uh, I think if we look at the Brazilian uh, um, IP law, you would certainly find one uh, kind of restrictive a lot, a lot of things that. Uh, especially because uh, we don't have uh, multinational companies actually uh, commercializing technologies in, in, in several sectors, and therefore the strategic, the, the logic behind the Brazilian uh, law was to be as restrictive as possible, uh, considering the trips uh, requirements and avoiding uh, fines from 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 uh, avoiding sanctions for, from trips. That's why, uh, uh, and the, because also Brazil has a, an industry capable of copying several areas, uh, but it doesn't have uh, uh, leading uh, companies uh, in terms of the world scenario. That therefore the idea is to make it like, for instance, the pharmaceuticals were not were not uh, the, uh, patentable uh, matter in, uh, in before the the IP law of 1996. Like the ages, you could not patent um, uh, medications in Brazil because this was not the interest of the country. But it was kind of forced by trips. And... Great, great. Awesome. Thank you. So, so it was thank a you. thank you. Anybody else who have a question or um, Dr. Gabriel has given his email ID plus you can find him in the LinkedIn. Just search for Dr. Gabriel and he is into my connections and Divya Ma'am's connections. So you will be able to connect to him and you will be able to ask questions or you will be able to interact through LinkedIn. So, sir, thank you so much for joining in today. And really, the technology has. Uh, brought us together and with your with India and Brazil uh, this session was very very interactive and we 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 didn't had much idea the audience didn't have much idea about Brazil laws and mm -hmm. you have great given us a great insight and uh, we are truly honored to have you here with Indian Institute of Patent and Trademark and we really look forward to have more interactive session with more industry leaders from India who want to maybe explore uh, their uh, business or explore their brands in Brazil. Oh, uh, well, thank you so much, Esther. I really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, it's just, uh, really the technology is making the world smaller. That's kind of a very, very good thing. And it's great to... Uh, have this uh, session with great questions. I think the audience uh, was, was very uh, uh, interacted a lot. Very, very nice, very interesting. And and, I, and I'm here, so you have my email. Let's uh, keep in touch. Sure, sure, definitely. We'll be in touch. And any of our industry partners who want to have a more idea about Brazilian law, surely we, I'll uh, be uh, coordinating with them and uh, like referring it to you. So, and okay. plus, so it, it is a nice session to have you with us today. All right. Awesome. So thank you thank so you, much. Uh, all right. All right. Bye have bye. a bye bye. Have a nice day and please take care of your health, everyone. And uh, thank oh, yeah, you so exactly much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much for joining in today. Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, the Bye -bye. recording of this session, I'll send you. We are recording this session, so we'll upload it and we'll send to you so that in case you want to use it for your audience or for other purposes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think I will share in my LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very interesting. We will have, uh, like, we can also benefit the Brazilian audience because uh, most of my LinkedIn connections are from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that's India is a great, it's a large country, it's a great country. I think uh, Brazilian people in general, they are very interested in, uh, in knowing more about India and uh, uh, other opportunities for interaction. I think they are always welcome. All right. Thank you so much. And we really look forward to more interactive sessions between India and Brazil from now on. And thank you, audience, for being great listeners and supporting with our uh, uh, this uh, 
global mission of uh, right. going into multiple countries and having you giving you this uh, platform to interact with our international speaker thank you so much for joining in we wish you very good day from india and good night from uh, we are we having a late 8 pm it's a dinner time almost in india so take care everyone for your health we'll see you soon again in more sessions All right bye 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 take care